Hello folks, in this video we're going to start really putting all of the pieces together. We'll get this update thing working, <laughs> hopefully, and then we'll do some, probably some validation, a little bit of security, and I think that'll be us. We will have all the jigsaw pieces in place at that point. I do not think we'll have a perfect Udemy clone or anything, but we'll certainly have an awesome foundation, the kind of back end that you could definitely work with if you were going to do a site like that, which is exactly what I'm planning on doing actually, and I look forward to uploading that and showing you that in a future video. In any event, I would like to kick this thing off by opening the shell, okay? That's the Mongo shell, and just to make sure we're all on the same side and singing from the same hymn sheet, I'd like you to say DB dot member dot remove okay and this is how we remove okay now I don't know if you had anything on the member table I had a few things just from testing I just thought it would be nice if we all started from the same place you know now I have the server up and running right here I'm using nodemon today which I'm sure you've heard of it'll save me from having to type node dot all the time and what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to the explorer and hit refresh and the vibe now is that I'm going into members and I'm just going to do an ordinary update okay it's this members forward slash update thing and let's see if we can pick something how about uh, well actually I don't <laughs> I've just realised I've emptied the members table, hello, alright, suppose I'd better add one first, so let's do that first, okay, so we're at the post thing here, and um, I'll chuck in the old chestnut, which for me is Chico, and for picture, I'll just say pick, and we won't need the rest of this here, okay, so there we go, and thank you very much, try it out, alright, so you should have now one member on the members table or collection right if we run our sh shell again whoops and do db do you know something i'm that much of an idiot i just deleted it db.member.find.pretty it doesn't matter because we can just do try it out again there we go and if i just say that then there we go okay fair enough just just added a member, okay, everything normal, calm down, calm down, good, right, so let's move on, and I'll show you the thing that I was trying to show you, we have members forward slash update going on here, now, you can type in a where condition, something like this, where username is Chico, and then we can, in this area that says data, we can add in anything that we would like to get changed. So for example, we can go like this, let's say, and we can say picture, and I'm gonna change the picture so that it says new pick, okay? There we go. And if we say try it out, everything looks normal. You can see that it says count one. Now that count one refers to the amount of rows that were affected by this and sure enough if we go to the shell and we do that members.find.pretty thing as you can see new pick has been changed and everything is normal okay now I've been building up to this mass update of usernames business okay wouldn't it be cool if there was a way that we could trigger all of that I'm talking about updating other uh, collections or tables, whatever. Wouldn't it be good if we could do that stuff automatically every time that the username was updated? Would that not be a cool vibe? Yes, it would. Well, it turns out that Loopback has just the thing for doing this, and it's a vibe I'm going to introduce you to now called Operation Hooks. Now, we've looked at ordinary remote hooks so far. Remember those before and after hooks and all of that stuff, right? Well, operation hooks work at a somewhat higher level. 
So instead of pointing at a particular method, like for example, in our other efforts, do you see how we had a before hook that triggered when this say my name method thing was fired, okay? So that was us being very precise and particular with our hooks. Operation hooks are a different story. And for the purposes of being all precise, I'll just read what it says here in the user guide. It says, operation hooks are triggered by all methods that execute a particular high level, create, read, update, or delete operation. Now, that update that we just carried out happened at members forward slash update. Here it is right here, okay? That's where all the action happened, folks. And if we have a quick look at the user guide, by the way, I'm on the page with the headline, exposing models over rest. If we go to that page and scroll down, we can see all of the different methods that come out of the box. And as you can see, the one that says forward slash update has a name. The name is update all. So we just ran update all and that's the vibe. Now, if we have a quick look at the operation hooks page again, it turns out that there is a certain type of operation hook called after save. Here it's here. And if we click on that, you'll see that after save can be called after we have invoked update all. Can you see that? It's straight from the documentation, folks. Straight from the documentation. Now, maybe the user guide is not so bad after all, because if we scroll down here, you'll see quite a nice little example of how one of those after save things works. And by the way, this is exactly what we are trying to do, right? We are trying to update other collections after we have updated the members collection. So I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to open up member.js and let's paste that in, shall we? So it looks something like that, and we'll just uh, space out, make it look a little bit nicer. And right here, I'm going to change my model to say member, like so. We can see it, it says member.observe, right? So that must be doing something to do with, presumably, <laughs> keeping an eye on what this thing's doing and it's saying after save ctx well we've seen that before right we used context up above they're calling it ctx doesn't matter you can keep it ctx or you can change it to context doesn't matter at all you know that that's going to be some kind of object that contains things that we can look at and manipulate you know variables and whatnot and look there's our old friend next. We've seen that before, you know what that does, right? Now, inside here we have some stuff, but who cares? Let's just simplify. Let's just simplify and we'll just say console.log. This is the after save vibe saying hello, okay? So, nice and simple, and we'll just save that, okay? If we now go into our explorer here and we go to members forward slash update and I'm going to change this new pick back to pick and by the way if anybody's wondering well why you're not changing the username it's just because I don't want to have to keep messing about with the username thing I'm just changing the picture for demonstration purposes okay eventually this will be changed so that we are just updating the username in any event, I'm going to click try it out. And if we go to the terminal, you should see that it says, this is the after save vibe saying hello. Pretty cool, right? But you know, there is one thing that you have to look out for. You see, back to the documentation again. And if we just uh, have a look at this after save thing again, you'll see that the after save can actually be called 
when a whole bunch of stuff happens, including create. Can you see that? So, this is something that we have to watch out for. We need a way to differentiate between an update and a create, because what's the point in doing a whole bunch of MongoDB updates, changing the username, if somebody has just created this user or this member for the first time, it doesn't make much sense, right? So our goal as we bring this one to the end is to figure out how to differentiate between the updates that we should be doing something with and the other stuff that we should be leaving alone, okay? Well, fortunately for us, the makers and all their wisdom have added a thing onto this which is going to help us to differentiate between create actions and update actions. It's a little thing that they attach to that context object called is new instance. Here it's here in the documentation. Now I had to dig around a little bit to find this and I know that it doesn't really jump out here too much, but take it from me that when it's a new record that's being created, when it's a create event, is new instance will be set to true. But if it happens to be an update, which is the kind of thing we're interested in, then is new instance will be undefined. So we can use that information to our advantage, but there is one other thing that you need to look out for. Let me just show you. Right here, we have a search going on where username is Chico. I'm going to say where username is Chico XXX, right? There is no username called Chico XXX, right? And if we say try it out, you'll notice that it says count zero, okay? So, in other words, nobody was found, nothing happened, this was a duff one. It is only when we get an actual match. So for example, yes, there is a Chico and I'm gonna change the thing to pick two, try it out. When that happens, then the count is one. And in actual fact, folks, I think that we need both of those pieces of information before we can, you know, figure out if this is something that we should be working with or not. Now, this may change in the future or something. In fact, any minute now, somebody could tell me that there's another way of differentiating between the stuff that we would like to have trigger all of those updates and the stuff that we can just ignore. What I would say is keep an eye on the comments and if something else comes in, I'll just mention it in the comments and I'll keep you right, okay? But for the moment, the following method seems to work. Let me just show you the vibe. I'll take this out here. Okay, so the following seems to work. If we do an if statement and it's going to have two conditions, okay, like that, and the two conditions will be if context dot is new instance is equivalent to undefined, right? That means if this is an update, okay? That little thing, that's all it's saying. If this is an update, okay? Next thing. And I'm going to say the context dot info dot count is greater than zero. In other words, if there's a if this is an update and something happened, okay, because the count has to be greater than zero. And just as a reminder, this is what we're talking about. This you are looking at context.info. It's the information that has been returned. And we are saying that if that thing has a count that's greater than zero, we know that something has happened. And in that case, I'm going to just say console.log, you, you need to update 
some other collections. Okay, now, again, just so that I'm very clear, this little if statement is something that I figured out just basically digging around in the dirt and trying to figure out a way to, you know, figure out if it's something that we need to act upon. There is a high probability that either there's another way of doing this or that something else will come up. Maybe I missed something, I don't know. So keep an eye on the comments just in case. If something else comes up, I'll update that in the comments. But for the moment, I'm happy with this, okay? This is going to tell us what we need. So let's give this a test drive. And just to be super clear about the lay of the land, we'll start this server up again. And I'm going to go to the explorer. I'll hit refresh here. And let's jump into member and let's create a new member. So here we go. Can be anything at all, doesn't matter. It'll be, you know, getting deleted in a second. But here's a new member. I'm going to say try it out. Okay, 200 response, everything cool. Now that is a candidate for that operation hook. However, Thanks to our little if statement thing, there should not be that event happening, that console.log. If we go to the terminal, you'll see everything looks normal. That's good, okay? Let's now go back and let's do an update. So, that, well, we're on earth, are we? here we are, members forward slash update. And we'll do a where condition something like username equals Chico, and we'll do some X's, right? So this username does not exist, okay? Does not exist. I'm going to chuck some stuff in. Let's say picture is equivalent to blah, 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 blah. And there we go. And I'm going to click try it out. Now, if we move down, it's a 200 response. There's no errors or anything. But nevertheless, you can see that the count is zero. Nothing was affected. Nothing happened. Again, if we look at the terminal, you'll see that everything is normal. Finally, if we go back to this update thing, this time I'm searching for Chico. Now, there is a username called Chico. And this time, I'll change the picture to XXXX. We'll say try it out. This time, the count says 1. It's a 200 response. This time, something did happen. There was actually an update that happened. And if we go to the terminal, you'll see that it says you need to update some other collections. Okay, that's us. Now, I apologise for this video being kind of long, but I wanted to go through this quite slowly so that this makes sense. Let me just remind you folks, there is a chance that this if statement could be changed. I mean, it seems to work. Uh, it seems to be doing the job, as you can see. But keep an eye on the comments. If something else comes up, if there's some other way of differentiating between the things that we need to act upon, then I'll let you know in the comments. But in the meantime, thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one.